Hey, chapter 20. Well beyond chapter 7. Well beyond chapter 11. Well beyond chapter 13. Well, well beyond working in the construction phase. Or not. It's your prerogative. It's your prerogative. You could go the route of Brooks Brothers, if you'd like. It's your prerogative. Modifying parts. Present company included. In addition to creating parts from original model elements, you can divide these parts into smaller ones, or even itty bitty bitty ones. You can even change the phasing properties at a part level and use grips to modify the extents of the parts, like key grip. Best boy, boom operator, dolly, manager. Let's begin with an exercise to divide some parts using planes and sketch lines. Schindler's List, the engineer episode. Oh, another Karl Marx. Shoot her under my authority. It'll take more than that. Anyway, <laughs> good flick. Anything. That's how it feels to be a, a designer in this in this world. It's like Schindler's List. <laughs> anyway, you can Google that particular passage. It's on YouTube. So anyway, let's begin with an exercise to divide some parts using planes and sketch lines. Go back to the parts model view and select the top part of the roof at the roof level. Parts model view. Select the top part of the roof at the roof level. Top part. Honeycomb. Look at that. Isn't that just the cat's meow? Okay, yeah. This will be the layer representing uh, the insulation. Let me just come over here a little bit. But notice that within the context of selecting this, you don't have any opportunity to edit the uh, wall, the, 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 the thermal layer, or the, any of the layer um, assemblies. This roof assembly, you have no option to do it because it's derived from the original model, right? Um, now, that doesn't necessarily have to hold true. Okay, now, from the part panel in the contextual ribbon within the context, parts panel, you'll see, divide parts. Divide, divides one or more parts into small parts. You can sketch geometry to divide the parts, or you can divide them with one or more intersecting references you select, such as levels, grids, and reference planes. To divide a part, sketched lines must partition the dashed outline that displays around the part or the active work plane. Now, I have to read that again, not for you, but for me. Divides one or more parts into small parts. You can sketch geometry to divide the parts, or you can divide them with one or more intersecting references you select, such as levels, grids, or reference planes. To divide a part, sketched lines must partition the dashed line outline that displays around the part on the network plane. Okay, so this is where uh, you may pour uh, a deck or, or, or apply insulation in, a, in, in not one particular laid-in piece. If the building's 300 feet by 300 feet, I doubt it. If the tractor trailer is going to pull up with a, a, a square 300 by 300 slab of concrete. But here's the thing. It could be one part of a 10,000 square foot warehouse that could very well be. Like the way they created the, uh, when they lifted the Bayonne Bridge. Did you see the way they constructed that? In parts? <laughs> I did. They, uh, down the military ocean terminal and truck them up one at a time uh, right right down 440 pow anyway there you go again get goofy so divide parts you will enter the sketch mode where you can either select an intersecting datum or draw your own dividing lines now ah look within the context of selecting the part and in the context of dividing the part, the command is invoking transparent commands within the context of invoking the commands three times in this instance. And as you can see, add, add selected parts to the division. The geometry or intersecting reference that defines the division must partition the dashed outline that displays around the selected part on the active work. 
it. Remove. Remove selected parts from the division, which we haven't divided yet. Can you see how this is going to turn into a, a labor uh, analysis tool? Do you see, you see the writing on the wall yet? Do you see the writing on the wall? How it's going to start to help you uh, formulate cost? Yeah, I know. Accubate and all that. It's fantastic. I know. But again, you're going to be able to now take this model and then uh, look at the construction schedule. And if you've talked to any general foreman in the field, they look at the general contractor's construction schedule and they want to crumple it up and throw it in a ball and throw it in the garbage. And these are the highest GCs, I've, uh, the highest um, $4 over scale, $20 over scale, $30 over scale. Some of these general foremen, they look at the GC's construction schedule and, and, and they, they just think that it's a piece of garbage. And, and in some cases, it could very well be, depending on the GC. But in actuality, uh, some of these larger general contractors, they're not bumbling idiots like some of these uh, subs want to make them out to be. Uh, they're, 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 they're in the business of ensuring that a project comes to fruition completion and they have the stakeholders' best interests in mind. So don't just throw the GC under the bus uh, as a sub. Don't throw the engineers under the buses as subs um, because it's the other way around. You know, as a, as a GC or an engineer, don't throw the subs under the bus because a lot of times these, these engineers come out of school and they come and they look at these, 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 these subs as, as, as their uh, subordinates and they treat them with a certain level, like I am in the upper echelon, creme de creme. I have been trained in the arts of war. It's like Braveheart, uh, long tooth, uh, long shanks throws them out the fucking window. If you've ever seen, if you want to talk about parts, right? Some of these folks come in with a chip on their shoulder, and they're getting it from their mother and father, right? They're getting it from their mother and father, and, and, and the door pendulum swings both ways. You got the begrudging field blue collars, and then you see the overbearing uh, creme de la creme that just uh, the aristocracy, the, uh, the aristocracy, <laughs> the aristocrats that look down on the working man, let them eat cake, right? So, listen, sociology plays into this, and you know I told you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, I'm going to insist that you behave. You haven't insisted that you behave. Again, United Nations Model Assembly, they tell them, these immigrants, before they get over here, do not disrespect them. The ones that are educated, that have been here, Here's $900,000. Go to America, create 10 jobs, but don't piss off. <laughs> don't disrespect them because they act differently. And I'm an example of that. Listen, you, if you got to a million dollars to come over here and create 10 minimum wage jobs, uh, create, you know, 35 hours a week for a, for a person that is working for a minimum wage, I, I implore you to continue with that, uh, with that workflow. But please, when you send over your engineering managers, your architects, and your construction managers, and your general contractors, and all these firms, that you're going to, ins that you're going to insist your project be uh, lucrative to you back at your homeland, remember, there's guys out there like me that know what's going on in the world. So you can't bullshit a bullshitter. Know this to be true. I know what I'm talking about. I, I'm not intimidated by your, any of it. I'm not intimidated by any of it. I'm not intimidated by your father's 30 years in the business. I'm not intimidated by your father's 30 years at Oxford. I'm not. It, I'm not. Because you didn't do what I did. You didn't have the balls. You, and, and you didn't have the opportunity and you weren't forced into the path, but you weren't forced onto the path that I was forced onto. 99% uh, of them wouldn't have come back up the path. Upstream mouse click. I'm an upstream mouse click. I just want you to know that. Right. It's not a threat. It's just a promise. Now, edit sketch. Edit sketch lines within the dividing scheme that defined the original selected part in this mode. I didn't go to actor's school. I didn't go to the School of Fine Arts. I didn't go to the New York, Skill, New York Film Academy. I go to B&H Photo all the time in Sam Ash, but I work in the neighborhood. All right, edit sketch lines within the dividing scheme that defined the original selected part. In this mode, the original part or parts are highlighted and display a dashed outline on the plane. 
You can modify it to leave existing sketch lines or add new ones to change the configuration of parts in the division. Note that sketch lines must partition a parts dash outline to divide the part. The results of your edits display when you finish. Ooh, excuse me. Finish sketch mode. Okay. Now, click the intersecting reference button in the contextual ribbon. You are presented with the. Um, you are prevented. You are prevented from doing that. You are prevented from it. You are prevented from doing that. <coughs> okay. Now. You are presented, hosted by the Maitre Day. I can't wait to see you. Welcome to the United States. Enjoy your stay. I uh, would recommend uh, Daytona Beach. I'll give you some uh, free NASCAR tickets to the uh, Daytona 500. It's on um, International Speedway Boulevard down by A1A, A1 A1 <laughs> Highway A1A. It's down south. Anyway. You will enter sketch mode. <laughs> you will. And <laughs> God forbid, you won't enjoy yourself while you're here. With a million dollars, hopefully, um, you enjoy yourself. That's a lot of money to be spending here. And I wouldn't want to see you come here and, and, and not have a good time. That's a lot of money that you're investing in your time. So hopefully you'll enjoy your stay. I aim to please. Click the Intersecting Reference Planes button in the contextual ribbon. You are presented with the Intersecting Names References dialog box. From the Filter drop-down list, select Add and notice that you can choose from Levels, Grids, and Named Reference Planes. Well, we have uh, Levels. We do have Levels. Uh, we do have Grids. We do have Reference Planes, and then we have All. So let's follow along with the text verbatim so that we refresh our memory. And, uh, Use the neuralizer to flash all of that from our history, all the bad times as we walked around listening to her on um, imported air. Again, this is for those in the know, these cryptic messages that I send, whether or not you're cognizant of what I'm talking about, I could be talking to the wall. You will enter sketch mode, and you can choose from the filter drop-down list, select all, A-W-L, select the all. And you'll notice that you can choose from levels, grids, and named reference planes. Ooh, an X-Y plane, an X-Y plane, isn't that nice? Well, it's not in the Z direction, right? Right hand rule, right hand rule, as I discussed at the joint board. Hopefully it didn't fall on deaf ears. All right, you, you're, uh, you're presented with that. Note that if a reference plane has not been named, it will not appear in this list. Check the boxes for the two references named the X plane one and X plane one. X and Y X plane, sorry. Double X, XO communications. Click OK to close the dialog box. You'll see two green datum objects highlight in the model. Click the green check mark in the contextual ribbon to finish the edit mode. After you complete the process for dividing the part, Notice that the part has now become four separate pieces. To experiment with how the parts maintain their relationship to the original object as well as the intersecting reference planes, go to the level one floor plan and move the reference planes around, but try to keep them within the boundary of the sample floor. When you return to the 3D view, you will see that the division stays single.
with the reference planes. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot. Let's see. Well, that's kind of cool, right? We have uh, all of these that now, if you look, how much concrete should we order today? Well, how many yards <laughs> is it going to take? How many yards? How many yards? A hundred. It's going to take a hundred yards. And we're going to fight for every little bit until we can move the chains, right? We're going to fight for every inch of uh, the yards until we can move the chains. So the chains will move, right? The chains will move. Again, that is an interleaved message for those of you that just aren't in the know. Anybody knows anything about a scrum would know what I'm talking about. If you understand what a scrum is, then you'll understand how this could help you. Right? It's, it'll help you. You can discern. Okay. So experiment uh, with this relationship. And if you want to try how the parts maintain the relationship, the original object as well as your intersecting reference planes. Go to the level one floor plan and move the reference planes around. But try to keep them within the boundary of the sample floor. When you return to the 3D view, you will see that the divisions stay synchronized with the reference planes. Well, let's hear the reference planes. That goes straight through. Think of it, Google right now, Google Euclidean space. You'll understand, then you'll understand draw order and microstation, and in addition to that, you'll understand a little bit more, more about the Cartesian coordinate, the coordinate system, polar coordinates, as well as the, uh, the Euclidean space. There's a subway stop in Brooklyn, Euclid Station. They don't name these things uh, for any reason other than how hard it took to study to be able to do this sort of thing. Study Euclid. I can't. I, I've been trying to tell you for years. Hey, they. So here's the Y plane, right hand rule. Here's the uh, the X reference plane. Oops, if I can select it. And here's the X. X plane one. And they're named. So, right, when you create the reference planes, if you don't name them, they're not going to show up in the fil in the filter dialog in the filter pull down. <gasps> Excuse me. I need another cup of coffee. It's two thirty. Man, I'm a workaholic. I'm a workaholic. All right, in any event, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, the gist of it. So let's move this. I'm going to use the nudge tool. 9 foot 6, 8 foot 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm going to get this over to 12 inch. Uh, maybe we'll use tile instead. We're, maybe we'll use marble tile like we did over at um, Fairleigh Dickinson University, Madison. The contractors were was coming in one uh, side of the building, and the contractors were stealing it, going out the other side, making tables for their houses. There's a grudge the GCs there, too. And, you know, and all the mulch, they robbed all the mulch. They brought mulch for the project. The contractors were getting there at 5 in the morning with their pickup trucks filled with 55-gallon garbage cans, leaving the job site with... One, two, six, six garbage cans full of mulch that was intended for the project. Some of these people, they have no morals. Theft is theft, man. You justify it, and they, you, you have your son on the job site. Not me. My father wasn't doing it. But think about that. You know what I mean? What, do you think it's a victimless crime? See, you with light bulbs. That's why the light bulbs are screwed in the other way on construction sites, because everyone robs the light bulbs. It's theft. And they have to monitor the, uh, the, the financial model. It's ridiculous. Anyway, so there you go. You can see now we have this little puppy over here that is uh, only uh, 29 cubic, 0.29 cubic feet. Cubic feet, right? That's how you determine how many yards of concrete you need or how much. Uh, they're going to have to slice from the quarry. Real world scenarios. Again, and, and design and build, design and build firms. The contract is on board, right? The contract is on board. They're part of the team in design, AEC design build firms. We do it all, all under one roof, right? Like Enki, Enki, one of the bigger ones. All right, so same thing holds true for all the other bigger, bigger shops, not, not these ones that. Bush, not the Bush League ones. I'm not talking Bush League. 
Not talking about the ones that get the kickbacks from the politicians or well, give the kickbacks to the politicians. They're a whole other breed. And we're going to see more of them in this county, like anywhere else. They all follow the same mantra. It's their prototypical prototypes. A lot of them, you know they're going to steal 10 years before they do it. A lot of these politicians that are put in positions of power. Like, okay, all right, we, we already know him. We already know him. We've been working with him for the last 10 years. Uh, he's about to be uh, voted into office. So you figure in about five years, he'll be going to prison. We already know his personality type. We know everything about him. So you can almost bet on it, right? This one's definitely going to rob. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to name names. This one's definitely going to steal. Okay. So uh, after you complete the process of dividing the party, experiments around a little bit. And then you, when you return to the 3D view, you'll see the divisions stay synchronized with the reference planes. And that actually goes inclusive of me. You chopped up my family into little bits. You think I'm going to split? Absolutely not. Activating the ceiling plan for level one. And in the properties palette, further view, change parts visibility. I'm not saying you did. What, who am I saying you did? I did. I'm not blaming anyone for that. Um, oh, but I'm so happy. I'm so proud of them. It's little buggers. Okay, now. Yeah. Seven kids. Seven kids. And I'm still here. God, I don't know how I did it. I can't tell you I know how I did it. I can't say I did it alone. It was a community effort. After you complete the process, you'll be beaten to a pulp. Oh, oh. Oh. Coming to the end, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Activate the ceiling plan. Second floor ceiling plan, right? Level two, uh, blah, 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 blah. Level one, sorry. Level one ceiling plan. Okay. Let's take a look over here. Very interesting. In the properties palette, the view change parts visibility to show parts. Parts visibility. Show parts. Uh, let's see here. Parts visibility show parts, which it already is. Select the gypsum wallboard part on the bottom of the ceiling below the second floor. Select the gypsum wallboard part on the bottom of the ceiling below the level two floor. Well, I'm in the level one ceiling plan, and this part is gypsum wallboard on metal stud sheetrock below the second floor. Well, both of them are. Both of these are below the second floor. This one just so happens to be divided already. It so look like you're selecting the entire ceiling because there's all light blue. Oh, well, I'm in parts finished, so mm, it did complete the exercise, right? Oops, sorry. Again, I'm not going to model something when, one, it's already done. Two, it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, yeah, you can, um, graphically, this will look like you're selecting the entire ceiling because it, it will all highlight blue. You can make sure you have the correct part selected by examining the properties palette. The category filter at the top should display parts one, and the material parameter should indicate gypsum wallboard. Parts one, which it does, and gypsum wallboard material. But then again, so does this one. Parts one, gypsum wallboard. It was already divided up. And I just want to take a look here. Expansion joint? Looks like an expansion joint. Yeah. <laughs> Expand and contract. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, that's that for that particular passage. Now, click the Divide Parts button in the contextual ribbon, then click the Edit Sketch button to activate sketch mode. Draw a diagonal line across the part from left to right as shown. Uh, if you need to sketch lines to divide parts, the lines do not have to be in closed loops, but they must intersect the, uh, the boundaries of the part. Keep in mind that if the original element is edited so that its boundaries extend beyond any sketch part divisions, the part divisions will be deleted. Click the green arrow or the green check mark in the contextual ribbon to finish the sketch, then click it again to finish the part dividing mode. Activate the parts model view and orbit the model around. 
so that you can select the inside face of the wall. Select the part of the wall that would represent the gypsum board at the interface, uh, interior face of level two. Now, all that's been done for us except for the part at the bottom, number nine. And the last passage emulates the part that we used to divide the floor, right? So of the roof, so now, or I should say the roof membrane, the top roof membrane. Now, let's hold that thought because again, if we go back to the roof, you're going to know how many layers you're going to have to go and buy. How many eight by tens, um, four by uh, four by uh, four by eights you're going to have to buy, right? How much sheathing am I going to need for that wall? Well, again, there are formulas. Again, everyone's got their you know best bet, the best calculator they uh, use. Lots of different knockoff software platforms. This one's different. This isn't. This isn't Dad's ruler. This is a different tool. This is something else something way beyond whatever it is you think that you got that can do this. I'm sorry. I'm just, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. This is a different type of tool. In any event, working within a cloud, this thing could bring thunderstorms around. All right, now, activate the parts model view. In orbit the models, so you can select the inside Face of the wall. Select the part of the wall that will represent the gypsum wallboard at the interior face of level two. Of level two. <laughs> Which is selected. It says base level, level one. That's something that uh, well, it could very well be. Could very well be. It uh, could have been uh, created as a, a single entity as a base level of one and divided. See base level. So let's not let's not get too uh, perplexed over that particular passage that I happen to notice. But again, uh, if you remember, walls have base constraints, right? And uh, we told you if you go back to the chapter on stacked walls and, um, and how these wrap and how they butt up against each other and now the 20 foot default height was uh, originally defaulted out of the box it's an elevation Let's just take a peek because you know me inquiring minds want to know it was the way this model was created so again I'm not going to go nuts on it but you know what I mean man alright so let's go back to the parts model From the properties palette, find the show shape handles parameter. Let me just make sure I didn't uh, I flip, I didn't wet my fingers. Let me make sure I eh, didn't flip too many pages forward. Because then I'll really confuse you and I. Uh, yeah, yeah. So until we get the gypsum wall board, let's get that again. I think I got it. From the properties palette, find the show shape handles. Well, hmm, me no see. Shape is modified, yeah. Show shape handles, don't see it. Oh, there it is, show shape handles. Let me just get out of there, right. Well, yeah, they're up there, just like the uh, section box, or just like the uh, void forms and the uh, revolved blends and all of those uh, beautiful three-dimensional extrusions that we created, they have um, shape handles. And just like in Navisworks, the whole model has shape handles. The, uh, the uh, section tools have shape handles. The rotate has shape handles. And we're gonna get into Navisworks as well. Uh, you're going to find that's a state-of-the-art, state-of-the-art, cutting-edge technology. I'm trying to stay at, on the edge to a certain extent so that if Lord knows I uh, do get a chance to slow down, I could uh, maybe help somebody else at least get over that next hurdle. Uh, and again, this wire is intended to reach the recipient that's interested in receiving it. Now, okay. You will see triangular shape handles on all four sides of the part as shown. Drag the top shape handles down to indicate that the gypsum wallboard is not to be installed to the full height of the wall assembly. Well, that's a very, very tricky thing to do in 3D. So you're still in 3D, but go to a view where you can, you can actually see it. It's not intended to be installed to the full height of the wall assembly. 
drag it down to indicate just a more board is not to be installed to the full height. Okay, well, we uh, obviously, now this is very, very uh, important. Firewalls, right? Think about this. Firewalls that don't, uh, that, that go up to the deck, under the underside of the deck, that are, that are one and the same with it. Uh, this is where fire stopping comes in and plenum chases come in and, and all of that. It's where all the soffits come in and uh, how you're going to stub your conduits up in wall framing up uh, in conduit and then you can go shield it, twist it uh, above the ceiling without putting in conduit, stuff like this. Uh, you, you'll be able to put your, uh, your wiring on uh, cable trays. Well, maybe the contract may call for the, for the conduit to be, uh, the wiring to be uh, armored in the, in the wall, but when it goes up to the ceiling, depending on the fire rating, you know what I mean, man. You know what I mean. This might not, this might not be a fire rated wall. So if I come down here, you say to yourself, well, right there is where I'm going to put that. One foot, five and three eighths below. So there's the gypsum wall board. And as you can see, this is a uh, this is the uh, stud that is supporting the ceiling, the compound ceiling, drop ceiling, for lack of a better term. All right, so there are several other ways you can interact with parts in your project model. Select any of the parts and observe the properties palette. You will see that you can override each part's material, phase created, and phase demolished. Now, that's... Um, that's, uh, that's important. Okay, so... Some um, part properties can be overridden. <laughs> All right, now, real world scenario. Real world scenario. So far, well, well, let me give you a real world scenario. I can't sell sheetrock. <laughs> I'm just letting you know, right off the bat, you ain't putting stilts on me, putting a belt around my waist, and putting me up there. You don't want me installing sheetrock. <laughs> Holy shit, Batman, am I horrible. Uh, I'll use four buckets on one scene. Anyway, uh, so far in this chapter, you've seen how you can create parts to subdivide building elements such as walls and floors. While the workflow outline can take away from quickly laying out walls and floors, the parts tool is useful if leveraged correctly. As an example, one use of the parts tool would be to define precast panels, in many instances, as an example, oops, in, any, in many instances, the precast paneling follows architectural grid lines. Controlling those with hosted voids or sweeps can be cumbersome and lead to a lot of manual coordination. Hosted sweeping can also be problematic around windows or other openings in the panels. This workflow should, uh, would allow you to dynamically update the design and have it resonate through the documents quickly and clean up more easily than sweeps. Knowing when to make use of a tool in Revit is almost as important as knowing how to use the tool. Tools like parts that allow a granular manipulation of building geometry are typically better left until later in the design process. All right, so I'm going to leave you um, with that. Uh, we're going to get into more of uh, modeling in the construction phase in the next few sections. And this is, this is going to be uh, for some of the iron workers out there that are interested in uh, prefabricated parts. Uh, so uh, if you're interested, I'm, uh, I'm here all week.